Yeah, I'd like to call this meeting to order and it's the Planning Advisory Committee meeting for November 16th, 2021. Welcome everybody. We've got a, uh, we've got a busy agenda tonight, so we'll, we'll get started uh, right away. Uh, so the first order of business on the agenda is land acknowledgement. And uh, I'd like to begin uh, by acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands of the Acadia First Nation, part of Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And approval of agenda. Got to move over and Nick, seconder and Patty. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Good, all those opposed? Motion carried, thanks. Uh, item four, approval of the minutes from September 14th, 2021. Do we have a a mover to get down on the floor. Patty Durkee and Patty Simpson seconds. Their discussion. Okay, seeing none, um, I'll call for the, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, very good, motion carry. Uh, item five, uh, business arising from the minutes. Uh, there is none I'm aware of. Item six, action. So uh, I received a letter and it was addressed to the chair and of course PAC, so I've included it on the agenda. And uh, earlier on this evening, I think Nick uh, circulated it to the folks that didn't have it on the committee, but uh, there are a number of requests for presentations. So. I, I thought about this a little bit as chair, and uh, we, we, we are in the throes of executing our uh, learning plan, which we, we'd all agreed on as a committee and so forth. That's not yet done. And, and um, because of that, what I'm gonna recommend is that we have a motion to uh, forward this to council for action with our uh, recommendation uh, from PAC eventually. So uh, certainly this will be given consideration, but. Uh, it would be by council as opposed to the PAC. So do I have a mover for that, to, that action or no? Oh, okay. Do I have some other action somebody wants to take on it? Yes, Lauren. You mean me? No, Lauren, pushing? Councilor Cushing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. I had to get, had to get on you. Um, so we have these requests here. Yeah. Um, you mean we have to take this to council first before we can say that we should schedule these people in to, not tonight, but we can schedule these people in to make the presentation? Is that well, correct? What, what, what I'm sort of saying is that we, We've had a public participation session, a couple of them, and we tasked staff with coming up with the plan, which we approve for presentations. Right. And, and now we've got some additional presentations uh, that, that are being requested, which, which is okay. But at, at the same time, we haven't really finished the work that we started essentially as a, as a committee in, in the, in the um, the learnings that we ask staff to do. So we're, we're not even really at that point. We've got another one of those to do. And, um, you know, we've, we've been several months with this at the PAC. So, I mean, my, my recommendation would be to, to honor the request and send it on to council. And again, PAC is just the very, very first part of the process and the agriculture, uh, any potential amendments. So certainly council could, uh, you know, we'll certainly receive this and we'll review and, and potentially make her if we decide to go that way. That, that's that's my recommendation because, you know, if we were to try to maybe have some kind of recommendation to council, you know, before Christmas, that's, we've been months at this. So there's not been a rush, but there's still not a rush. I mean, it would still be heard by council and, and potentially we'd have those presentations uh, at the council table and ultimately uh, council decides uh, you know what what's to be done so um that's my recommendation for for motion but certainly okay. it's at the it's at the leisure of uh or it's at the discretion of the of the whole committee not just the chair okay i understand you know trevor 
we still got another session to go for our uh, our, uh, our learning plan with, with fisheries. I believe it was the twenty six or yeah. seven something, like that. right? I think, yeah, is it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a bit. So, yeah. So once that one's over with, then we can then we can uh, entertain these uh, presenters that are here now, if council so decides to do so. Is that what you're asking? Well, I'm saying that we should forward the, the request to council with a recommendation. So PAC wouldn't hear the presenters. The presenters would be heard by council potentially, but council would make that decision. That's my okay. recommendation, but I mean, we could go another way. Uh, are, are you done, Lauren? Yes, I am, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Trevor. Council Hilton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So when we held the PAC meeting in chambers, um, the very last comment was, um, in addition to the uh, already supported uh, learning plan, could the community and could the PAC members make a motion to have additional people speak to the PAC? And that was said that they could. So this is what the community has done. Um, we only have one presenter on the 25th. Um, I, I, I think it's... I think the community would be upset and I'm, I'm a little upset that you think that this should be bypassed the PAC. Um, I think that the community has the right, they presented one very, very good um, uh, panelist in Inka Molesky um, who provided lots of insight. Um, we had four people speak to us that were, you know, proponents or lobbyists really for agriculture and they've presented some people that they want to hear and I want to hear too, because we have not, our initial concerns were around the environment. Um, we did, we spoke a lot about agriculture and not necessarily environment. And some of these speak, people speak to that and the economic impact of agriculture as well in the one that they sent tonight. So I'm not saying that we have all of them, but it should be up to the committee if they want to make a motion to bring any of these people to council or to the PAC meeting. Yeah. And, and and uh, just to clarify, I'm not saying it's any, the decisions up to anybody, but the whole of PAC, I've, I've indicated that I have a recommendation, uh, but there's no motion on the floor. So the, the motion comes from the, from the committee and, and uh, we'll hear a motion, I'm sure at some point, uh, Patty Durkee. Oh, uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're muted, Patty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> um, I would like to see these uh, presenters uh, come to PAC. I think the, we are the advisory uh, committee for council, and uh, we are the ones that are, are listening and going forward with the learning plan. And um, so to me, if some, if we can have, we only have one on the 25th, I'd rather see them done sooner than later. Um, and so I, I welcome additional presentations. And if we can set some up for the 25th, I don't wanna drag this out longer and longer and longer. I think we need to get through this. And then um, PAC has to, to make their recommendations to council. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, yes, Patty Simpson. And Warner, I see you there. I'm not certain if I got the order right, but Patty Simpson. So thank you, Chair. I'm going, I think Warner was ahead of me, so I'll let him go first. Okay. Warner, thank you, Patty. Uh, thanks, Patty. You, you could have probably said the same things I'm going to say. Um, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Trevor, but I think that uh, you'd be asking, uh, by doing it the way you propose, you'd be asking the PAC to make a recommendation to council about the full information that they have, should have. Um, then council would be making decisions with more information that we've given them recommendation for. So that's not the right way to go, I don't think. Um, okay. I glanced at the uh, information that uh, Gary Archibald sent down on the four, four people, and then there's a fifth one that came out earlier today. Um, I got a lot of respect for Gary Archibald. Uh, he's uh, he's usually above board in what he does, and he's a well-respected member of the community. And I think the people he's proposing would be beneficial for us to hear. Um, we already commented that we thought we'd like to hear from an environmental lawyer, and there's one in here. Um, 
and also uh, Stuart Lamont is very well regarded in the in the industry. So I think there's at least two people there that we should hear from. Um, the other side of it is I don't want I'm like Patty Dirk. I don't want to uh, drag this out, but I think if we can get some people in on the 25th, that would be ideal. Okay. Uh, Patty Simpson. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to echo all the comments that have been made by um, fellow councillors and public um, representation. I think that the, the appropriate way to go is to listen to the um, um, proposals that have been proposed to us as community engagement. I think it's really important. I agree. I don't want to drag it on forever and ever, but uh, they have done their homework. They've provided some appropriate um, individuals to present to us. And, and I think it's our job as the advisory committee to listen to them and provide them to make the Okay, thanks. Are there additional speakers? Is there somebody that would like to um... Oh, Patty, uh, I guess Nick Hilton, maybe first, then Patty Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I I read through the, the suggested speakers. I um, picked the ones that I thought would be most beneficial. It's not the ones that Warner, or one of the ones that Warner um, had mentioned. Um, so I'm not really sure if I should make a motion for the ones that I would like to hear from or seeing how we're a committee of seven, we may want to hear from them all. So I'll make the motion that we have instruct staff to reach out to the four proposed, uh, uh, the four individuals proposed by Gary Archibald and the one um, from Bernie Berry this evening um, to present to the PAC. And that will be my motion. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, um... Nick, I, I, maybe it was my technology or maybe everybody's, but could you repeat the motion again? I, I'm assuming you made one. You, I'm I making, um, because I think uh, we all have different differencing opinions on who um, we want to hear from out of this group. I think it's only fair that we make a motion to invite the four um, individuals proposed by Gary Archibald and the one um, by Bernie uh, Barry. Um, if it takes um, one or two more evenings, um, that would tidy it up so that's my motion okay we got a mover uh, patty you're second in that or yes i will second patty, that motion second. yeah and i just i just want to add that i you know um that uh you know if we can try to add those on the 20 some of those on the 25th um and i think we're at a point that you know we're getting uh both sides of the story uh, which is wonderful um and once this we've added these i think that will be to me that's enough at this point agree okay so we've got a mover and a seconder uh additional conversation okay i'll call question. for the vote all those oh sorry Qu oh question, question yes all those in favor signify by saying aye all those opposed Motion carried. Thank you. So, uh, my understanding, just to paraphrase what we what we've come to, is that uh, uh, um, our CAO is going to reach out to the presenters and see if she can, uh, you know, have them come in, uh, mostly to our next PAC, uh, you know, information or or train or learning session. Uh, but uh, if not, maybe maybe something else. So perhaps she can. Uh, perhaps I'll I'll have her comment on on her uh, move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So yeah, I'll just, I'll reach out to the names that have been nominated by the community. Um, we'll uh, see who's available on the 25th. It, it, you know, if there's a willingness on the part of all of the nominees, the nominated speakers to come on the 25th, um, are you interested in a, in a longer day, a marathon session in order to um, have, have the information presented, you know, in a timely fashion? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll do my very best. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my apologies. My schedules, my um, agendas, there is back up. Okay. So um, items for discussion or approval. We've got the development agreement for Park Drive. That's number seven. So um, I'll turn things over to, uh, I think, Carolyn, Ms. Ms. Robertson. I think that's probably right. Okay, Carolyn. Thank you. 
Evening, everyone. Um, so this is a really interesting application that we have. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to present it to you. I've been working with the developer. Um, I, actually, just a sec, I'm going to share my screen so I can flick through the port with you. Oh, Jenny, can you allow me to share? Everybody can hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we have a proposal for um, 16 residential units to be built just off Park Drive. Um, so if you can see my cursor, it's, we're talking about these two properties here. Um, and there's access here on the Park Drive. And I have um, included at the beginning of the report a bunch of context pictures. I went and took a whole bunch of pictures of the properties. So hopefully give you an understanding of what where we're talking about. Um, so right now that this lot has already got four units on it um, and the intent is to build another three buildings similar to what's existing to make it uh, 16 units total. Um, so the proposal is to build in Park Drive, which is a really lovely area actually and makes a lot of sense for high density residential. Um, it's well, it is serviced by municipal services. Um, it's very walkable, it connects to the trails and there's also um, a sidewalk uh, down Pleasant Street that goes, it, you, can, you can walk straight to uh, Stars Road from that area. Um, the property itself is zoned residential general. Um, the road uh, that we're, Park Drive that we're talking about itself is partially owned by the province and partially owned by the municipality. So the portion that that would be accessing the, the street for this development is on municipally owned uh, frontage. Um, so when I get an application like this, Oh, I'm just going to click here. The first thing that I do, and Roger and I have these conversations weekly, is I like to go back and look at the municipal planning strategy and see what council's intent for these areas are and, and what, the, what the thoughts and vision are around higher density residential. So that's how I started for this project. Um, and what I found was that council's vision is, is very clear that they, that they would like to see um, a variety of housing types that service all ages and income levels. They want the housing to be high quality, um, high quality developments, so well thought out. And how they've done this is they've targeted higher density residential developments to be accommodated um, actually within this area that we've de that's been designated as residential general. Um, so right where this property is. Um, and the idea, kind of the vision statement for council within the municipal planning strategy is that this area makes a lot of sense because of the availability of sewer and water services and the proximity to services as I've already highlighted. So how um, the, the strategy has enabled this type of development to happen is by permitting um, more than four units to proceed by development agreement. And this just allows council and the planning advisory committee to put some consideration into the development. And I think that's where that high quality um, comment within the municipal planning strategy comes in. So this is where you can make sure that the development is very well thought out. Um, so when I, when I do a development agreement, there's a few things that I like to think about. So I'm just going to um, highlight these for you because I want this is how I want you to think be thinking about it as you're looking at this, this proposal and, and making your recommendation moving forward. So the first thing I think about is what will the needs of the future tenants be for this new development? So what, how is it going to be for them to live there and what kind of services are they going to need? Um, how will this development impact the neighboring properties, um, people who already live there and own their properties and 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 reside in the area. Um, what will the impact be on the municipal services? So if there's ability to accommodate this kind of development, and then I also consider what is the economical uh, viability for the developer. So when we can ask for a lot of things when it comes to these kinds of developments, but it's always important to consider that that the developer. Um, 
you know, this is intended as uh, a way for them to make some money. So you can ask for the sky, but they do need, it does need to be a viable development in the end. So you gotta think about those things as well. Um, so for this development agreement, and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing right now, but if there's specific policies that you'd like me to comment on or explain to you, I'm happy to do that during the discussion. Um, but for this development agreement, some of the highlights include a uh, dedicated public amenity space. That was something that was asked for within, uh, it was a specific policy criteria for a high density residential development. Um, it includes pedestrian access and consideration about how uh, pedestrians will flow and access the property and park drive itself. Um, screening for the neighboring properties, um, clearly designated parking um, and a 1.5 space per unit requirement. Uh, it looks at uh, it includes entrance design and consideration for uh, wayfinding for the development as well as landscaping and access waste storage um, stormwater management and vegetation uh, both for maintaining and maintaining existing vegetation on the property but as well as putting in new landscaping um, so uh, with kind of the hopes that we might get a little nitty gritty and talk about the policies and the development agreement. I'm just gonna give you my recommendation and, and open it up for you guys to talk about this a little bit more. But uh, because the application is consistent with council's intention, I think it fits very, very well with uh, what's put in the municipal planning strategy for the kind of housing developments that's wanted and where it's wanted, where larger housing developments are wanted within the municipality. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and the applicants worked very hard going back and forth with municipal staff to come up with this, this proposal for you. So for those reasons, I'm gonna recommend that, that the planning advisory committee recommend to council that they approve the proposal to enter into the development agreement for a multi-unit residential development with Jason Murphy, um, with his numbered company uh, for the 38 Park Drive. Um, so I'll open it up and let you guys talk about it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Caroline. Um, just wondering, Caroline, if you can go back, um, is there a, a picture of the design of what this would look like? Um, I flipped over it, but I'd like to go back to, to see um, what that would look like again. Sure. So you can see my screen again, right? Yes. Okay, so I, he, I, he's given, provided us with sketches of what the units look like, um, which is just a, basically a one-story building with four units. Um, so this, this would be what that will look like, and that's what's existing, so you can see that. Um, and then we've received a sketch of kind of what the layout of the property would look like. Um, so his intention is to do kind of two units and two units, almost like their own two buildings, almost like their own little community and do a landscaping buffer between them. Um, and then he doesn't show his public amenity space here, but the way it's written in the development agreement, there's quite a few options. So he uh, kind of been talking with the developer, his ideas are, you know, to do some patio and an outdoor um, food and, and seating spaces and those kind of thing along the, along the rear of the property um, that can be shared between each building. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, hey, uh, Warner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a, a couple things. When I was going through the uh, through the proposal, um, I noticed in the emails back and forth between uh, Carolyn and and uh, Roger, I believe it is, uh, there was some talk about consolidating lots, but it seems that the lots aren't going to be consolidated. So you're going to end up with two lots, uh, each with two buildings on it. So I'm just wondering if there's a potential for a problem down the road with that. Um, the other thing uh, in the development agreement itself, it talks about a buffer between the buildings for privacy, uh, but it doesn't give any details on how big that buffer should be, how wide it should be. So I, I know there would be constrained some by the amount of land available, but I'm just wondering if that's an issue as well. Um, 
Okay, so uh, as far as subdividing and the, and the emails, so that was just a conversation had with um, with Ed. Derek, and I'm so sorry, he's municipal staff and his last name has just left me, but the conversation was actually related to hook up to water and sewer for the properties and, and how it relates to the, the municipal sewer bylaw. Um, so for the purposes of a development agreement, it's kind of different than um, if you were to develop on a single property because we're creating our own rules for, for a group of properties together. Um, and the benefits of keeping it separate for the applicant would be without consolidating the properties would be that banks usually like that for funding purposes. Um, for, for this situation and, and from the conversation that I had with Derek, because it's gonna be, um, because this development agreement will be registered against the two properties, there shouldn't be an issue with actually uh, connecting into the services because they'll be looked at as one property altogether. As a, as a single development. Um, as for the, the buffer question, I'm just gonna flick to the development agreement and I guess I'm gonna have to zoom in. Um, so there is a buffer section here um, and we've given them a, few options in this development agreement and, and it's under screening. Um, so how this works is we have, the developer has the option to do an OPEC fence um, that must be at least six feet in height um, or a landscaping strip, which has to be at least 10 feet wide. Uh, so that would be the specifications around the screening. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, next to uh, Patty Simpson and, and then uh, then stay over. Um, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, so currently there is one four unit um, building in existence, correct? Right. And did that require a development agreement for that structure to be constructed? Nope. So for the residential general zone, the uh, development up to four units are permitted as of right, and development the further development is does require a development agreement. Okay. And then from the sketches I saw, then my understanding is that the additional three units are going to be subsequently constructed, um, like kind of one after the other, with the the buffering and that sort of thing. And so because of the numbers, then it requires a development agreement. Correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's it for now, but I might be back. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. So I just I just want to loop back to um, what Caroline was sharing about registering the development agreement with uh, against both PIDs and to um, Mr. Camo's uh, question and or comment. So a development agreement stays with the property and if the properties get bought or sold, those development agreements that um, are registered with those properties, they stay with the properties and new owners would be obliged. Thank you, Steve. Councillor Cushing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to go on a little different spin than, than what I've been hearing about the development agreements and whatnot. I think uh, the homework has been done to to satisfy what should be be built there. I think it's a good thing to see. Uh, immediately when I seen it, looked and read through and whatnot, all I could think of was uh, the development down on along Haley Road there with the with the seniors' homes and stuff, or the people living down there with them. Mm -hmm. So something similar, I would say this is going to be right. So, uh, so it's a uh, it should be a quiet place up in there, and uh, I think it's a very worthwhile project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Are there additional uh, comments, or does somebody want to make a motion? Or yes, Patty Simpson. Sorry, sorry. Um, so just a quick question. It might be a refresher for me. Um, is there any need for public consultation with the development plans or, or not? 
My, my understanding is, uh, and, and I'll, I'll have the CAO add in, but my understanding is that the development agreement is done, um, is done with, with the planner. And uh, then it comes, of course, to, to council for approval and there are, are public considerations there. So CAO Brooks, is that accurate or is there anything you'd like to add? No, that's accurate. So in the executive summary for the report Caroline filed with you, she does have a handy little section on process there. And there's, there was a lot of material in the report, but if you go back to the beginning, um, the process is, is summarized there. So if the PAC does recommend this to council, there will be a public hearing component. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Good question. Uh, additional questions or is there a motion? Patty, I'm assuming I'm assuming your hands down, but I'm not certain. Patty Simpson. Okay. Uh, Josh Trask, Mr. Trask. Hey, I'll I'll make a motion that we uh, accept Carolyn's recommendation and move this on to council, and accept the uh, proposed bid and the development agreement. Okay. Thank you. Seconder. Councilor Cushing, are you seconding or? Do you have a question? Yes, I am. Yeah. No, I'll second that. Very good. So we have a mover and a seconder. Uh, additional conversation or question? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thanks so much. And I'm just going back to my. There we go. Uh, other items. Uh, we, we didn't have any other items at the outset, so I don't think there are any other items, but I'll give people a moment to, to uh, ask if there are additional items. There are none. And date of the next meeting, CAO Brooks. So as far as I know, we will still plan to have our regular meeting in December if there's business um, that the team needs to bring before you. Um, but just a reminder that we do have a commitment on the 25th, which is outside of our regular schedule and stay tuned for details on uh, building out your agenda for that day. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you everybody for a successful meeting and I'm looking forward to our uh, uh, continue our learning plan and the additions to the, um, to those learnings. So, uh, yeah, until until that time, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, have uh, Victoria, Miss Miss Brooks, look at the uh, the additional pieces, and uh, we'll we'll put all that into play. So uh, there being nothing else, we've got the date of next meeting. I'll I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion I'll to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Daddy Durkee, seconded by uh, Lauren Cushing. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everybody, and uh, see you. Uh, see you shortly. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Have a great night.